Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for the people review. As always, we'll have Ezekiel Nyai talk who joins the conversation. He's a public affairs analyst. Ezekiel Nyai talk. It's good to have you join us this morning. Always a pleasure to be on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you for being available as well. Uh, we start off with the Nation newspaper. As always, uh, tension would be on the top stories of the papers this morning. The banner caption says, pressure on Buhari to reject reworked electoral bill. Uh, that's boldly written on the Nation newspaper. And I borrow on provision that makes that ministers should resign to contest for office. I neck to get lists of candidates August the 18th. Uh, okay, so I think there's a bit of a mix up, you know, with the papers this morning. Uh, let's quickly correct all of that. The nation says silver government will unravel how toxic petrol was imported. And that's what you find. Minister accuses Asu of blackmail. 286 American Europeans others acquire Nigerian citizenship. That's, that's something to, uh, you know, applaud. And still looking at the front page of uh, the Nation newspaper this morning, operators grown over rise in aviation fuel by 110%. And you also have another header saying, AFDB laments drop of Africans' GDP by 165 billion in 2020. 165 billion dollars uh, in 2020. That's what you find here. Fear grips Petroleum Ministry Department and uh, as scarcity spurts to Oshun State. This is some of the headlines this morning on the Nation newspaper. Let's go straight to the Daily Independent uh, with the following headlines. Let's start with the lead um, story there. Airlines collapse, fare hike loom as Jet A1 rises 400 naira per litre. Airlines collapse, fare hike looms as uh, Jet A1 rises to 400 naira per litre. That's uh, a quite worrying there. Also from the Daily Independent, Federal government orders probe into importation of adulterated fuel. Federal government orders probe into importation of adulterated fuel uh, with the following riders. Considers compensation for those affected by bad petrol. 286 Americans, Arabs, Asians uh, become Nigerian citizens. Reps seek national emergency on ritual killings. And at the top of uh, that front page of the Daily Independent newspaper, to 2023 presidency, Atiku's associates write PDP, say only ex-VP can win election for party. Um, and it has a writer, why Nigerians should prefer him as next president, AASG. AFC, AFC or ACFTA, that's the African Free Trade uh, continental free trade area, bold reforms needed to unleash Nigeria's growth potential, IMF. Four killed as Fulani militia burn houses in Kaduna, bandits kill DPO in Katsina. Two soldiers, four ESN gunmen die in attack. And that's a very worrying one there. Uh, we know what happens anytime uh, soldiers die. NNPC records $224.29 million from export of crude oil and gas in August. NNPC records $224.29 million from export of crude oil gas in August. Interesting timing of uh, that, uh, the release of that information, you might say. ex jam registrar or Gerinde plea bargain fails. Trial resumes and business political society thought leaders meet to build consensus for national rebirth. These are some of the headlines on the pages of the independent, Daily Independent newspaper. All right, let's move our attention from the Daily Independent newspaper this morning as uh, we pay attention to the leadership. The board caption on the leadership says, adulterated fuel. Federal government launches probe as firm fingers NNPC subsidiary 
uh, this uh, bold caption this morning. And NMPC seeks to bridge petrol supply gap. Ipman blames infractions on extension of PIA implementation. That's right underneath the bold caption and away from the bold caption. You also have, we won't sign agreement with federal government again, as is quoted. And NAF investigates mystery helicopter flying over Bauchi Forest. Political parties raise concern over fresh plot to scuttle electoral bill. And just before we move away from the leadership, dispensation of justice. I did not blame judiciary for delay. That's what Malami is quoted to say. And Africa needs $784 billion annually to defeat poverty. This is according to Akumi Adeshina. Uh, that's what you find there. And National Rebet, Elite Group meets in Lagos and six consensus. These are some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. And finally, uh, headlines from the front page of The Punch. Marketers court cases, or fair court cases, FG hints at compensation for damaged vehicles. It's talking about adult traded fuel, uh, the kicker of that headline. Marketers fear court cases, FG, hints at compensation for damaged vehicles. And the following writers, customers having problems with fuel, um, fuel suing outlets, arresting owners, marketers. And it says 300 million liters arrive in Lagos as NNPC assures customers of 20-day supply. At the top of that front page of the punch this morning, NIMC portal, uh, telcos bow to pressure, begin server configuration to VNIN platform. Foreign treatment reps propose seven-year imprisonment, 500 million naira fine for officials. ACF tackles Akeridolu on Southern Presidency, says constitution must prevail. We assembled 100 Presidential material, says 2022 committee. And we go to the uh, bottom of the front page of that punch in Eastern Power. Wiki lends support as EFCC rearranges Jang for 6.3 billion dollar fraud. Yeah, he stormed the court uh, to be present as uh, the proceedings were held. Police suspect robbery. Gunmen in military uniform kill Ogun Bisman, uh, flee with car money and uh, 552 billion naira fraud a jam x registrar operated eight or eight phony firms says eight this is a uh, quite worrying uh, if you ask me national assembly pdp national assembly pdp caucus meets i am lawmakers back presidential bid we're investigating video of a lecturer shaving students' hair in classroom. That's coming from the university in question. And Zamfara Assembly begins process to impeach Matawali's deputy. Those are some of the headlines on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Let's uh, now bring in Ezekiel Inyai to host the public affairs analyst uh, as we do justice to this, um, these headlines. Um, uh, Mr. Etuk, let, let's start with the... Um, the issue of adulterated fuel and um, the fact that uh, most of the papers are uh, using that as their lead story. Um, for instance, uh, the leadership saying that uh, the federal government has launched the probe into this situation um, with the a firm fingering an NMPC subsidiary. Um, yesterday, we were told that the president was angry and ordered a query of the chief executive officer of the newly formed um, Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory agency. As far as you're concerned, who should take the fall for this? I think the, 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 the answer is as clear as should be expected. The head of any section should take responsibility for any infractions or any, any crimes or any failures within her or his setup. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, the head of the petroleum industry happens to be Mr. President. Before you take responsibility over an office, I mean, it is already tasking enough uh, for you to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, petroleum is seen as the mainstay of our economy. 
And one would expect that you get somebody that is like a, a vice president of some sort, somebody who is like so high up there that you put him in that area, whichever you call your priority areas. And in, in, in an economy where we are thinking in terms of diversification, where the president decides to be the minister of petroleum you know, ministry, it just gives conflicting signal, and I, I really can't wrap my head around it. But let's say he has his reasons, and he takes on the responsibility of being the Minister of Petroleum. I, I don't know. Let me. It's just like saying the minister is very... Okay, assuming that something happened in the education sector that was um, scandalous, you know, or injurious to the system, and the first statement you hear is that the minister is very unhappy about what has happened. No. What I want to hear is that the minister has resigned. The minister has tendered a public apology. You are the minister, Mr. President, unfortunately. I don't think you should resign. But I think the first thing you should do is to tender public apology. And because you are Mr. President as well, we'll give you the liberty to take a decisive action. And one of such decisive actions would be to put aside whoever is in, at the head of that institution so that you launch a major, 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 you know, inquiry into what happened and you don't want him to interfere with it, yeah. the nation will see the animation and see the anger and see the very intentional action. Yeah, maybe this, super, yeah. Oh, president is angry. If president is angry, what's that got to do? Um, with okay. there, there is um, a history um, from, from uh, our checks of um, a web of, of, of corruption and um, crime. Um, regarding the importation or the trade of of, 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 of petrol fuel uh, from Europe, you know, in other parts of the world to to Africa, by some companies, it's on record that um, in in 2008 the same, the same thing happened uh, with Owando. Oh, yeah. Owando had to put out a statement calling out and mentioning the name of the oil trading of petrol trading company that gave them the the, the, the consignment. You know, 33,000 metric tons. That company was uh, barred by the Nigerian government after a probe in, involving even the House of Representatives, where the then DPR said they didn't have the laboratory facilities to test for what was in that fuel, um, ethanol at the time. Uh, um, recently, the federal government has moved on from the swap deals to what they call um, a direct purchase, direct sale, to say, okay, we're giving you crude oil, you're giving us petrol. They did a bidding process and 15 or 20 companies were, were awarded the contracts. Um, and some of those companies, about four, um, have been fingered by um, uh, investigations in Switzerland as being dubious and having underhand tactics. And they were given these contracts. I'm talking about com companies like uh, Trifigura or Trafigura, who was responsible for um, a, a, a dumping of toxic waste in Cote d'Ivoire in, in 2006, if I'm not mistaken. You have a company like Gonvo that brought in um, a, 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 this dirty fuel into Nigeria in 2008 that spoiled people's cars in Lagos, for which the federal government bought them is given a contract. And, and there are other ones I could mention, like Vitor, that has been fingered in a report I've read, um, um, on the dirty fuel by, by Swiss trading companies. So there are four of them. So why, why do you think or how is it possible that companies that have a questionable history of dumping toxic waste and dirty fuel on African country, countries are still the same companies that are given these contracts? Is it that our government officials from the NMPC, GMD, um, which is the sole importer of, of petrol, they don't know about the history of this, th these companies? Is it that Timipre Silva, for instance, Minister of State for Petrol, doesn't know about the history of these companies? Let me, let me tell you, thank you for the very extensive work you've done, which kind of clears me to go to part B. I want to say this, and I want to say with every sense of responsibility, that we need to be careful on our leadership recruitment criteria and what we citizens do. The people that get to office pay through their nose to get those things. They can't do that to go and serve you. They can't do that. You can't have your cake and eat it. People that get into offices like ministers or even president or even governors are people that we should beg them. We should identify them, beg them, 
cajoled them to go in and serve us. But when we put all manner of obstacles, I'm running for the governorship of my state, Akwaibom State. And I'm thinking in terms of service, but you meet a group of people, and the first thing is you want to be governor land. Land. You got to land with Akwaibom, I'll give them that 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 honor. The, the youth in particular are awesome. They are starting to reject that concept. It's like, what are you bringing to the table? And that's awesome. But generally in Nigeria, elections, look at what the Senate have just done. They've moved the cost of elections for presidency. We're going as much as 20 billion, which between you and I is, is chicken feed. That is less than what will be budgeted for the governorship of Akwaibom State. I can tell you that with every sense of responsibility, that 20 billion is like, is that for Senate or something? When these things are so expensive, what do you expect? The people that get into office, they're not thinking, you know, the people to do deals with are not the clean guys who are going to say, I'm going to do everything professionally. I'm going to provide the service. I'm going to make sure that we go through due diligence. No. They are going to look for the guys that are going to say, man, how are we going to do? We've got to get into the hotel room and say, so election, they come, or we need to raise funds, man. How are we going to do? And because of that, they must be compromised. So I think that before we start to put too much pressure on the politicians, we Nigerians need to look at our leadership recruitment criteria and what we expect. Do we want people that we just take what we can while we can and leave them four years to run us dry? Or do we want people that we say, look, I don't want any money. I want good governance. You know, I, I had this very elaborate four hours meeting and people said, look, you give me 20,000 today, maybe the total money I make in elections, you know, and I have four years to pay school fees that could have come to me free if I'd gotten proper election. And when you juxtapose what you get with the respect to what you spend, you discover that you, you, you got 20,000, but you are going to spend additional 80,000 on your children's school fees, not to talk of your health care and other facilities. So at the end of the day, you make a terrible net loss. So we need to enlighten people. I think the only reason why these people that should be that have been blacklisted, not should be, that have been proven and blacklisted are still brought back. My personal opinion is that these are the deal makers. These are the people that are going to give you very, very un, 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 unimaginable, you know, juicy, you know, uh, deals. And these guys are going to make tons and tons of money in dollars to come back and prepare for election. You'd be amazed that maybe the budget for the presidential election is something like 200 billion and that money's got to come from somewhere and these are the sort of deals and i think mr president should live up to what he told nigerians that he's a man of reputation a man of character a man of principles and the first thing you should do which should have been done yesterday but i think the next best time is this morning is to move the leaderships out and the, the, the inquiry doesn't need too much to go on and take decisive action. And he's on his way out. Let people start to fear him. There's too much of being perceived as a toothless bulldog. That's not okay. Oh, president is unhappy and like, excuse me, please, please, please. Let's also look at the leadership newspaper this morning. And now yeah. uh, we're moving away from uh, all of the conversation surrounding politics and what have you. Uh, let's stay with ASU now. ASU is saying we won't sign agreements with federal government again. Do you believe ASU? I mean, they're known to be signing agreements and you have this agreement not being respected over time. Was we talking about 2009? ASU is the father of the enlightened children, not children, adults because university is not for children. I want to know what ASU has done to say we are always having people that have no respect for education. We are now trying to profile somebody who has good brain between his ears. We know that all this thing, whether they honor or they dishonor agreement has to do with the emphasis that the leadership pays, the premium that they lay on education. ASU knows this. These are professors. These are the, 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 the leaders the, 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 uh, of the citadel of knowledge. So they should know better. 
I still should please, please spare me all these uh, dire traps that, are, that amount to nothing. They know what to do. If you have a problem, I still should know better that you attack such problems or what they call first principles. You know that any man that has no value for education will always treat education as, as inconsequential. What I've just said is no rocket science. They know it. So what have they done as concerning 2020? Look at the businessmen. They've gotten themselves into a room. And, you know, when you look at, I happen to be very aware because of my relationship with virtually all of them, very aware of what's going on. But the question is, what is their interest? They're starting to come together and say, how can we protect our interests come 2023? What has ASU done? To what extent has ADU, ASU mobilized the students to sensitize them that, look, we're going to keep having these problems unless we have people that are paid premium in education. Let's, let's have a conference. How do we profile somebody? How do we, what sort of systems we put in place to ensure that if you are not education heavy, we are not going to even look your side at all? What have they done? They're sitting back. And then when a government comes that has no interest in, in, uh, in, in education, uh, they will start to you know, you know, have this body language that I really can't understand. Let us wake up. They know that making any noise now is just like pouring water on a fowl's back. They will just shake it off. In fact, at the stage, you may become an irritant to them. But when you start to go think outside the box, go into plan B, 2023 is around the corner. Now, who is that person that has proven over the years that education is something that is the, the air he breathes or she breathes? And that whoever that person is, we're going to mobilize our students and they have them in numbers. And the students go back and tell your parents that except this man comes in, you're going to pay more. The students will be the one that will go and market their parents' home and market their brothers and sisters, and even market those in secondary school that accept that this thing is changed, they are coming into a bad system. Those secondary school people will go back and market their parents, and the, 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 the parties, whether it is PDP or uh, APC or ADC, they will now start to look for people that will fit the bill. Right now, we are keeping quiet, and then once they bring up anybody, you start to run, 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 run commentaries. I know that it's too late to cry when the head is off. This is the time I want to advise Asu. Look, just just manage this remaining one or two years because you're not getting going to get anything better. And then, Interesting. Yeah, that, that's the honest truth. And then put your foot down on the fact that you're going to go on massive mobilization, sensitization of students to look for that person that has track record of being education friendly and passionate. Well, well, well um, I mean, um, it, they have been accused in the past of being used by, you know, uh, politicians to, to um, in elections, let me, let me call it that. You know, they always um, have a role to play during elections, both on the campus when uh, they serve as um, returning officers and all that. But we, we'll leave that for another day, or like they say, we'll leave butter for Matthias. <laughs> but so yeah, I took, um, uh, the, 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 the punch has, uh, has an interesting headline on its front page. Um, foreign treatment. Uh, reps propose seven-year imprisonment, 500 million naira fine for officials. This is saying that um, a bill seeking to prescribe a jail term of seven years and or a fine of 500 million naira for officials who spend public funds on foreign medical trips narrowly past second reading at the House of Representatives on Wednesday. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, are things getting better in Nigeria? Are, people, are we beginning to see the will um, of the people prevail? I mean, Guy, 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 <laughs> brother, brother, on whose desk is he going to land at the end of the day? Mr. President, we, we signed that bill that he will not go to uh, UK again, you know, till he leaves office. I beg, leave that story. Let's say. Uh, so so, so I, you, you feel this is dead on arrival? <laughs> dead on arrival. Not just dead on arrival. It's like I don't even know the word to use. You want president, my president, to sign that you shouldn't go abroad again for foreign help on health care. You want him to sign it. In six years so far, going to seven. Please tell me one institution that he's put in place with respect to health care. That will oh. make sure that instead of Nigerians going out, foreigners will be coming into Nigeria 
for healthcare, including okay. Aso Rock Clinic. Then you now want to pass this bill. You know, these guys should look for something to do. Wake up. Look but, for what, something. What, what do you think of the fact that the National Assembly, the House of Representatives, in this in this instance, has has come up with something like this, up all the way to passing second reading? We move on. We move on. We all move right. On. Is it going? Yeah. To, uh, just as we cross it down now, let's also look at the leadership newspaper. At this point, that's been the back and forth, and you have uh, saying, "I don't blame judiciary for delay." Talking about the dispensation of justice. So the back and forth with the judiciary saying, "You are responsible," and judiciary saying, "No." The executive, you know, you have a role to play with all of that. What, what, what do you make of this dispensation of justice? You know, it's a question of two fighting without <laughs> and both guilty. That's just, you know, in secondary school, you used to say two fighting. <laughs> and in this case, both are guilty. Because if you look at it, the judiciary has its very, very serious problems. Absolutely. I don't know how God is going to help us. And then the, the, the executive, even, even when the, the, the judgments are passed and everything, do they obey the laws? They really don't. We, we are currently running a system that running commentaries on them can be extremely tiresome for somebody like myself. Because it, it's like expecting a dog to meow or a cat to bark. This wouldn't get into office. I, I, I know of some people that are willing to, to do anything to be made judges. And, and, you know, sometimes they say ignorance is bliss. I happen to know too many of these people. I, I run one of the most influential uh, um, setups, you know, in the social media, you know, talk of WhatsApp group. And virtually everybody that somebody in this country is there. Governors, past, present, ministers, judges, MDs of banks, they are all there. And they are all people I put in there myself as my friends. So I know them, I interact with them. And each time I talk to them and they're like, they level with me. I just feel, I feel pained. I feel, I say, God, how are you gonna help us? Because people come on television and they say all the nice things, the right things. And they leave and he said, bros, he said, Oh, but if you don't talk like that, what will you but, say? Leave, you know. But but but, but 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 let's ask you now. You live in Nigeria, and you see the way the things are. And in the course of saying let justice, because over time, every time you have a case, uh, there's always a call for justice, and especially with uh, politicians or political office holders who have been accused of high profile, or I mean, they have been uh, accused of one or two crimes which have not been proven. However. Do you think that the judiciary has been responsible for the delay of justice or the executive in this context? The judiciary has been largely responsible. The reason is that um, when you pass a judgment and you are independent and the judiciary and the executive refuse to implement it, you know what to do. You know what to do. But you see, these people are compromised how do you get to be a judge? What are the, you know, the, the, the recruitment uh, uh, processes? And, and uh, how, how do you get from, how can you get promoted? There is too much power that has come to the, to the executive and they use it and against the judiciary. And to that extent, the judiciary depends on the mercy of, of the executive. So they cannot really, really like bear their fangs on the executive. So the executive takes advantage of the fact that they own the power. They can pull the strings. So before you start to get too ambitious, they're like, you better be careful there. You know, the, 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 the executive have the implementation arm, which is like the police. And they even they have the, 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 the investigation arm, which could be the police or the DSS or any of these people. And every Nigerian is a criminal. I can tell you that for a fact. Uh, until being proven, you, including, uh, including until myself, proven. but but you but you have to prove myself. it. I'll tell you. I said including myself <laughs> because it's so easy. You cannot explain how you live like a. E Ezekiel, yeah, yeah, it's okay. let me come in here now. Um, but, no, because no, because of the want of time, I Ezekiel. I, I want us to also look at the fact that the judiciary is not solely responsible for investigating all of this crime and criminality no, and dictating all of that. 
And so it is it, not the responsibility of the judiciary. So it is actually what comes to the table of the judiciary just, that they I just actually... Said that. I just said that the executive have the capacity to appoint and they have the capacity to investigate. So because of that, they have the capacity to threaten the judiciary. So they use that, that stick, you know, that threat, that hammer against the... So that the hammer of the judiciary is actually you know, designed by the executive. If the judiciary, the executive gives you rubber, you cannot, you know, hit the gavel well because it won't make any sound. And they want, the time they want you to really hit it hard, they give you uh, metal instead. So because of the control that the executive have over the judiciary in appointment and investigation, and I, I tried to make a statement which you maybe were uncomfortable with. You see, because if you dig into any body's past you can bring out a piece of paper you can bring out a record that can impl impl implicate the person so the executive have all they need to make even a nice person a good person in the judiciary to be compromised it's sad but we really need to come as nigerians and have a thorough interrogation of of our processes of our systems of our structures to make sure that the rule of law will come to bear and that comes when you, exec you elect executive that mean well and have respect for the rule of law. When we do that, and the political class that believe in the greater good of the nation, then we'll be able to allow each person to do her work or his work independently. That's when we start to have a nation that believes in the rule of law. As right. today, we have an enterprise where the end justifies the means and they don't care about Nigeria, all the care is about themselves. And it's sad. And we must look at this sad reality and Th change. Thank it. you so much, Ezekiel Yaitok, for being part of the conversation. It is always interesting to listen to you, share your thoughts on all of these national issues. We look forward to having more of your time on the show. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Mercy and my brother. Thanks so much. Well, all right. Uh, interesting uh, analysis and very, very um, engaging and uh, uh, um, really, really lighthearted. Uh, at times, um, oh, he's always a delight to have any day, any time. We have to uh, take a break now. We'll check out what happened on this day in history, and of course, when we come back, we uh, dive into our major discussions right here on the breakfast. We'll be right back. <laughs>